Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Making our way to the church epistles, 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of themselves. You know, they have their own mirrors. They love what they're doing. They boast about themselves. Covetousness. The advertising. Television. Radio. Billboards. Newspapers. Mailings. Everything to sell you something. Boasters. Look who I am. Look how great I am. You go to the doctor's office. There's all his diplomas. All these people that have initials after their names. Proud, again, that word is never associated with God and holiness. Blasphemers, uses God's name in vain. Cusses God, using the word of God to their own intent. Disobedient to parents, oh boy, that one's not a mark of today. Unthankful, one day in a year this country gives to, to Thanksgiving and what is it anything but? It's football, making dinners, doing the dishes, and going out to spend money you ain't got. You don't even get Christians that thank the Lord. How unthankful are we? Go to any restaurant and just sit and watch how many people bow their head. Unholy. It's unrighteousness. Unright. Without natural affliction. That means boy likes girl, girl likes boy. Husband loves wife, wife loves husband. Wife and husband love their children. That's natural. That's not today. You, you when I wrote this note, this day and age, 2017, let me give the date. Natural affliction, there are people who don't even know what sex they are and what bathroom they use. A natural affliction would say, for me. Oh, men's room. That's where I go. You know? Truth breakers. That's our, that's our country. That's the civil authorities. False accusers. Those were the time of Jesus. Remember when they put Jesus in trial, they had all these people step up with lies about Jesus. False accusers. You know the rate today is, oh, you know, he, he uh, sexually abused me, uh, sexual abuse in the workplace, and, and, you know, most of it is unfounded. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. So if it's good, it's not wanted. They want something that's bad. Traitors, heady, it's your head in the clouds, high-minded, even higher, you're thinking of yourself, lovers of pleasures, oh, that's America, more than lovers of God, and sometimes you get Christians that are supposed to love God, and they love the pleasures more than God, that's one of the, that's one of the seeds that the planet planted in Mark chapter 4, the cares and, and riches of the world has choked the seed. Having a form of godliness. See my collar? 
You see how I dress? I, I dress in, in righteousness of my religion. I can do great things in the name of God. But denying the power thereof, Jesus is not God. Well, the blood of Jesus can't save you. Matter of fact, we'll even take that out of the Bible. And then from such, what we just read, verses 2 to 5, turn away. So, in this day and age, you're not to have friendship with most of these people in this world because they fit this thing. For of this sort, all right, what we just read, are they which creep into houses, creeps. That used to be a bad word. You, used to, you know, you, when you call somebody a creep, he wasn't in your best interest. So here's a guy that's not of your best interest. He creeps into houses and lead captive, put in bonds, put under rules and regulations, silly women. <laughs> Isn't the Bible great? What that says in a modern Bible? Laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Now, I hate when I go in a doctor's office and they got that filthy television on. And that woman today that was speaking was speaking lies and she didn't even know what the truth was and still kept on speaking. Shut up, lady. You are a silly woman laden with sins. What? You just lied to national TV and covered up because you didn't know what you were talking about. And people did not turn the channel. Divers love. Divers means all kinds of things. That's not the guy that goes underwater. So there's all kinds of lust, these women. They want to be like truck drivers. They want to be military men. That's not the way God designed a woman. God designed a woman to be feminine, to be the, the weaker vessel, the delicate part of the family, the one that keeps the family by love. The man is to come in with the rod, the bills. And these women today, they're silly. Oh, the Bible says, I can have a man take care of me and love me and, and serve the Lord and do right, but I want to go and make my life hardship and, and, you know, that's silly when you go against God. Ever learning, education. Colleges, campuses, ever learning. There are some people, that their occupation is to live off the government while they keep on going to college. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Jesus said, I'm the truth. And they don't know who Jesus is, and they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, which is good. And matter of fact, they'll blaspheme the name of Jesus. And, we'll, and I'm not going to go through this whole list of it. They'd rather love themselves than love Jesus. Matter of fact, some of them put themselves as a pedestal as a God. I know there's one guy in Hollywood right now. He's not afraid to say, oh, I'm God. You're a fool. And this is public and private education. Will not enlighten you about God and your soul. Listen, today, if you think you're going to send your children off to a Christian school, that's, that school is probably more worldly than a worldly school. They're still telling bad jokes and writing on the bathroom walls. Now, as James and Jambres, this would be Exodus 7, 11, and 12, these are the men that withstood Moses. Hey, look. Look at what Paul does. He goes all the way back in the Old Testament to name a name. These are the magicians. So we've got Christian magicians in the name of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And look what Paul says. So do these, Janies and Jambres, the magicians, also resist the truth. Uh-oh. Do you realize every time God kind of worked on the heart, of Pharaoh as soon as these magicians showed up he, he, he hardened his heart check it out 
If not the same verse, within one or two verses of the magician showing up, Pharaoh would harden his heart. Men of corrupt minds. Thinking anything that was is holy. Come on, we've come a long way since Cain. We've got nuclear bombs. we got H-bombs. we got bazookas. We've got bombs today. That, you know, we can kill people and not even be in that land. We've got nuclear submarines. You can park yourself in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean and take out somebody in the Middle East. You don't even have to be there. We've got technology that from America we can launch missiles. Internet, intercontinental ballistic missiles. And the enemy's got those missiles. And man has come up with a great way to kill other men and torture them. Corrupt mind. There has been a great vast of the internet, the great teachings of the internet, of the great wilderness of the internet, that we have filthy pornography, including children pornography. Somebody thought of that. Reprobate, how that? We're still talking about Janies and Jamboree's. Concerning the faith. Go look up reprobate in a dictionary, never mind the Hebrew or Greek, and see what that has to say. It's not a good word either. But they shall proceed no further. Uh oh, they're coming to an end. Everything we're reading here will come to an end. None of these people will be in New Jerusalem. How's that to say? They'll be in hell, lake of fire, burn it forever. For their folly, that's foolishness, that is the result and definition of foolishness, folly, shall be manifest unto all men. When's that going to happen? Great white throne. God is going to reveal all these men within men. You may have got away with it right now. Um, people already know who I'm talking about right now. I know this. Is the, God knows where Jimmy Hoffa is and what happened to him. And God, though the CIA, the government don't know, God knows. And if Jimmy Hoffa was killed, that man is going to appear before God and have to give an account for that murder. There's many and many unsolved crimes. They will be solved at the Great White Throne Judgment. You think that guy that you knew was holy and righteous and... and saved and did not go up in the rapture, you will find out why the great white throne judgment, when God reveals his lies, his deceivingness. Maybe your preacher, your preacherette, will stand before God, the great white throne judgment, and you'll understand. Do you think that lesbian and sodomy is something good and outstanding? You wait till God shows you at the Great White Throne Judgment what they do in the privacy that you don't know. That is filthy for them to tell you to do out in the streets. You'll find out about those, what the priests do and the nuns. It'll all be revealed. Their folly will be manifest unto all men. As theirs also was. God showed who Janus and Jambres were. God showed to the nation of Egypt and to Israel and before Moses and Aaron and before Pharaoh who these jokers were. And God says, as those men were revealed, so will all the world be revealed. And guess what? It gives a name. Man at the great white throne judgment, God will call you by your name. And then judge you. And reveal who you were and what you were. Well, it looks like the great white, I mean, at the judgment seat of Christ, this looks like our works are put out and a flame is put to it. If it burns up, okay, you lose. If it's gold, silver, precious stones, you gain. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, talking to Timothy. You've known my teaching. He hung around and learned from Paul. Manner of life, you know my conduct, you know my character, you know me, you know my habits. 
purpose. You know my motive. Faith. You knew what I believed in God. Long suffering. You knew all the tears and all the suffering that I had in time. Charity. You know how much action and, and giving I did. Patience. You know how long I waited, Timothy. Persecution. Timothy, you knew what I went through. Afflictions. You know the troubles and problems which came unto me at Antioch. That's where they first called Christians. So when they called them Christians, they weren't calling them a good name. And Antioch, Paul, man, he went through all kinds of problems while having the ministry. At Iconium and Lystra, those places are found in the book of Acts. What persecutions I endured. That's twice in that verse. That's a verily, verily. Of all that I've done, Timothy, you've known, and you know my ministry, persecutions. But evil men and seducers, that's a great name. That's a great name today of child pornography. Seducing children to do things that are immortal, improper, against God, against nature. 11. What persecutions I endured. He put it out. He went through it. Longevity. But out of them. All the Lord delivered me. I don't think you did it. Don't think it's you and yourself got you through. If you do not give God the credit in your life, you have sinned and you need to repent. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall... That's got to be changed in other Bibles. Because this is not preached. Suffer, suffer, alright, not just suffer, persecution. There is no good promises for living right in the Bible. In this world. Jesus said, marvel not the world hate you, no it hated me. The Bible says that the world is enmity against God and his son Jesus Christ. John 15, 17 to 25. Acts 20, 28 to 32. Philippians 1, 29. Persecution comes by living right. And that's why many people will not serve the Lord as Christians. That seed that came up was choked by the cares of the world. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. You think it's bad now? Do you really think it's evil in this time right now? It's going to get worse. I will tell you that the moralness of man will be perverted and will go astray from God what he has tended Adam to be. Recite your evolution and what you're teaching in schools, what your psychiatrists are saying, what your law enforcement are saying, it will get a whole lot worse. Thank God God's going to call his church out of it at one of these times. Wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. The deceivers are going to be deceived. The people are going to be deceived by the deceivers. There's going to be a whole tone of deceiving. And we haven't even read the Antichrist. We're reading about man. The great I am man. And his great religion. You know how many people fall off into hell? Believing that whatever man has taught them will get them right with whatever God they serve? You know what that's called? What religion you ever want to call it, what form of education you ever want to call it, it is in what God has said, deceive. If whatever their hope and their trust is, is not in the one that Jesus Christ, and the gospel that he died for our sin, was buried and rose again, 
if that's not it, it comes under the classification, you were deceived. Millions, if not billions, if not whatever comes after billions. Proverbs 29, 16. But continue, Timothy. In all of this wickedness of man, continue. In what? In the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. What you've been taught by the Christian doctrine. Timothy. Stray away from the world and the sin and do what is right. Now watch this. You want to see a great error that's going to happen later on? You want to see why men are going to get worse and worse? I'll tell you why. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise. I, I know there's not a period comment there, but let's stop there for a minute, if I may. Because we've already read that the credit of him from a child has been given by his mother and his grandmother. It just said right there that his mother and his grandmother had taught him the Holy Scriptures. Now, what do you think that men are going to get worse and worse when mothers are teaching and grandparents are teaching their children about Easter bunnies and Santa Claus and you don't need that deadbeat father. That guy is a, you know, he just every four letter word in the book and they downrate each other and, and marriage is broken and the church is broken. There is no church to these people. And then, you know, son, you are of this person and the whole world owes you something. And if you don't get it, you go out there and riot in the streets and get it. That's what mothers and grandmothers are teaching their children today. So that when their children have children, they're going to teach them to deceive their children as their children will be taught to deceive. Listen, it's what the parents are teaching the children are the future of tomorrow. And you can't even get Christian parents to raise their children right. It's only going to get worse and worse. Why? Because of the parents and what they're teaching their children. If even the parents have anything to do with the children. A lot of parents don't have... There are children out there who don't even know who their father is. Have, wouldn't have any idea. So they're raised by... Pharaoh. They're raised by Herod. They're raised by the government. And we know what's best for your child. Let's drown them in the river. Let's kill them. They're of no interest to us. But they can march them off into Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. Anything but holiness. And then you run across verses 2 through 5 in this whole chapter of what the world teaches today's children. And they'll grow up to have children and they'll teach them even worse. It's going to get worse. And then from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Thank you, Timothy's mother, Eunice and uh, Lois. Thank you. Thank you for raising your boy correctly. And he had a heathen father. And yet they still raised that child. And what? The Holy Scriptures. They didn't have no New Testament. All they had was an Old Testament. They brought that boy up in scripture. They brought that boy up, not Patch the Pirate, and not they brought him up with David and Goliath, Jonah and the whale, the, the priest who failed God, David who loved God, Saul who was against God, taught him the stories. Little Timothy, we come from Adam and Eve. We don't come from whatever else the world's teaching. Now, Timothy, I want you to learn this, this, this chapter. Made known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. How do you get saved? You better know the scripture. You can't get saved without the scripture. Don't bring me your programs. Don't bring your lap dance. Don't bring your alcohol. Don't bring your programs. Don't bring anything but the scriptures for someone to be saved. This is a little boy. Little boy had the scriptures. 
Look where he is today. He is widely used and trusted by Paul. And he's about to go do, well, in chapter 1, uh, 1 Timothy, he's about to go do battle in Ephesus. Thank you, Lois. Thank you for raising your little boy. Eunice, thank you for helping your daughter to raise this boy. May we have more like you too. Went to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Not baptism, not membership. In Christ Jesus. Timothy is saved. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It was written by man. Yeah, it was, but God inspired it. Man is the pen and the Holy Spirit is the ink that wrote the scriptures. You never argue with Shakespeare. You never argue with your textbooks, do you? You always argue against the Bible. And it's profitable. Oh, I can make money. No, no, no. And it's profitable for doctrine. It's profit. Its earnings are great for teaching. Not profiteering. Now, if you want me to profit and tell people what's going to happen about their souls, about the rapture, okay, that profit is okay. But not profit that I'm going to go into the ministry to make money. For reproof. Man, preach it at them. Tell them where they're wrong. For correction, to get it right. You've done wrong. For instruction in righteousness, how to be right, how to do right. What do I need to do? What? How do I go about it? What does God expect from me? I need to learn what God wants. How do you do it? Where is my book on a 14-step plan? No. Get my video for $19.95 and a love offering for $3. No. Get all my tapes. No. You get it by the scriptures. Psalms 23.3. You know, there are some people in this world that have a Bible, okay? And they're reading their Bible. And they don't have a church. There is no church in their area. Sorry. You know, there are some places in this world where the Bible and Christians gathering is illegal. And if you are caught, you are killed, jailed, persecuted. Exiled. There may be someone saying, hey, listen, you know what? The only thing I got is this Bible for instruction. Until the Lord sends somebody. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. Everything that God expects him to be. Thoroughly furnished. Not couches, beds, tables, chairs. Furnish unto all good work. You know what the Bible will tell you? What's a good work? The Bible will tell you what's a good work. What's not a good work? What we just read, verses 2, 3, 4, 8. That's not good works. What's good works? Boy, Timothy, let's see. Let's see what good works are, Timothy. Let's ask you uh, light, manner of life, doctrine, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience. Even persecutions, affliction, they are good works. They are pleasing to God. The Bible will be a measure of what you are to be in your life and conduct and purpose. There are men who go out there and teach everything against what God says. And they don't use the Bible. And there are some people who take a Bible and they'll misapply it and misuse it. And you've got to study to say, hey, what he's doing is wrong. That passage is not. Because we read yesterday, verse 15 of chapter 2, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, if my church says I'm supposed to use tongues and, and signs and healings, I need to study and find what that really says. If someone comes up to me and says, I need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, I need to study and see what the Bible says. I need to study about baptism. I need to study about being a mother. I need to study about being a father. I need to study what it is to be a child. 
I need to study about the Bible. I need to study more about God. And yet that's lacking. And that's another reason why these men are like this. These men, in what we read in this chapter, wicked and profane, are because they are not in the Word of God. They are rejecting God. And that's the fruit of rebelling against the Word of God. The rebelling against the Word of God caused sin by Eve. She added, subtracted, and footnoted the Word of God, and look where we are today. And look where men are today by not having a Bible and the Word of God in their lives. It's only going to get worse.